Well, this past February, when Matthew McConaughey helped release the new Sentimiento kit, it began with the line, Verde is my boy, Carlos. We are joined by that aforementioned Carlos, Carlos Trevino, and of course, uh, as noted, drives down uh, from Arkansas for each home match. Carlos, how's it going? It's going pretty well. What's that like uh, hearing Matthew McConaughey uh, mention your, na- your name? If I were to call you and, and get your voicemail or your answering machine, uh, is it something along the lines of my boy Carlos isn't available right now? Oh, man. Uh, it, it was a surreal moment for sure uh, to definitely hear uh, McConaughey first off say my name and then, you know, tell a little bit about my story and, and me driving, you know, from Arkansas to, to Austin. My voicemail, though, I don't, I don't think I've had it changed since I was in college. So right now it doesn't have my boy Carlos is unavailable, but hopefully pretty soon I'll, I'll get that changed. Seems like a lot of potential there. Uh, you reside back in Springdale, Arkansas. For folks not familiar, that is the northwest corner of Arkansas, right near uh, a variety of state borders. Uh, you're, you're down the road from uh, the college town of Fayetteville, Arkansas, home of the, the Razorbacks, of course. But hey, remind us uh, your connection to Central Texas, the, the Austin and San Antonio area. I, grew, I lived in Round Rock for a couple of years uh, in my in my early years. Uh, my grandmother lived in San Antonio. She was was actually what really jump started my love for the for the sport of soccer. I assume I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask you: Are you the kind of guy who takes the scenic route or the fastest route possible when you're when you're coming from Arkansas down to Austin? For me, I, I try and take the fastest route to Austin as possible. Uh, mostly I try and get the, the fastest route out of the state of Oklahoma. Uh, <laughs> I mean, and that, that's not a shot to, you know, anyone who lives there. I've got some family there, but it's just uh, being a UT fan, obviously you don't want to, you don't want to spend too much time in that state. So, Hey, set the tone for us. How often are you leaving on the day of the game? How often are you coming down the day prior? Just really varies uh, depending on work this year. It's going to be a lot more a day before since Since it looks like we've got uh, a lot more Sunday home matches, so I'll leave Saturday uh, about, you know, eight or nine, and then get get into Austin about eight hours later, uh, and then I'll leave that Monday morning uh, to head back. Um, If it's like a Saturday game, Saturday night game, I'll probably leave the same day. So usually day of, uh, I've got an alarm set for three, try and be on the road by at least 3.45, 4 o'clock. Any weekday matches this year, uh, is going to vary. I know the Houston home match, I'll leave actually right after I get back from Atlanta. I'll get back Sunday, and then I'll turn around and leave Monday uh, to be in Austin for the Houston game on Tuesday. So, hey, once you get to Austin, it's not like you just plop down in your seats. You seem to have as much energy still somehow in the tank as everybody else. How is it you uh, ultimately got involved and in, uh, became uh, – you know, a capo there near the front to help energize uh, folks who may have just rolled out of bed and made their way over to the the venue just in time for opening kick. Absolutely. So that actually starts um, last season uh, in the Nashville game. Um, I watched a couple of the games uh, on TV. Uh, Didn't know if I was going to make the Nashville one. Uh, My mother-in-law and I, uh, we'd always joked about just, you know, making a weekend trip out there because it's, about the same distance uh, to Nashville it is as to Austin for us. Uh, so we decided we were going to make the make the trip that weekend. Got down there, fell in love with what Los Verdes and La Merga and Anthem were doing, and from then on, I, I started getting plugged in to to really where I am today with with La Merga and, and Los Verdes to be able to become a capo and a section lead uh, there when I when I do come. So home games. Looking back, of course, Austin opened its inaugural season already in the midst of the pandemic. Do you think the pandemic allowed you to embrace the team more so in any sense that all of a sudden uh, folks felt like they could get involved via video chats, uh, Zoom meetings? Uh, was there anything that you were able to latch on to more easily because of the fact that everybody was kind of in the same boat, regardless of where they were living, thanks to technology? Uh, I, I believe it did. For Las Verdes, we've got Zoom meetings uh, for different events, whether it be watch parties, uh, away travel, you know, our secret TIFO meetings, our all teams meetings, whatever it may be. We've still got Zoom meetings right now 
just so those that can't meet in person, you know, we have everybody included. And it, it also benefited uh, since I'm still working from home, uh, being able to to take my work on the road with me with my laptop uh, and, and just work from the hotel if I needed to. Uh, you know, that that's definitely one thing that, that I think benefited uh, for me to be able to, to stay plugged in and and be part of the Austin culture uh, from up here in Arkansas your family you've got your wife Ashley currently you all proud parents of one but you did recently over the holidays uh, reveal to your Verde family that you all would be uh, welcoming another kid and I, I think it was was it the home opener that you all did your reveal I, I know in general people didn't care if it was blue or pink as long as it was Verde but uh, you mentioned you're going to welcome your first son is that right that is that is correct that was actually um, the last home match uh, against Seattle um, the that we did that. Um, we had to wait for, for the results to come back and we got it um, to the club and they, they set everything up for us to, to announce that uh, it was, it was a special moment for myself, uh, you know, for my, for my wife and my daughter that was there with me and definitely, you know, an incredible experience, you know, getting to, to experience that, you know, with, with almost a thousand of my, my closest friends now. Again, we're talking to Austin FC fan and diehard Carlos Trevino as Austin is hosting Minnesota United. It's an opening kick coming up, but it's one of the two long-distance guests we wanted to check in with just to see the commitment and early bonds that have already formed. So we haven't put a number on it in, in our chat about how many hundreds of miles down and hundreds of miles back is that round trip from your, your home in uh, northwest Arkansas to Q2 Stadium. <laughs> Um, well, it's it's actually kind of funny. Um, the number seems to continue to grow um, <laughs> every time. Um, grow the legend, Carlos. Grow the legend. <laughs> I know Matthew uh, in the video for the the kit said it was 700 miles. Uh, I'll set the record record straight. It is just around 550 miles uh, one way, so just under 1,200 miles uh, round trip. But if I had to to roughly guess the amount of miles I put in last season for the inaugural, uh, I definitely have to say it was pretty close to about 16,000. Uh, well, we look forward to that number continuing to grow again, along with the legend and along with the Trevino family. All right, Carlos, before we let you go, uh, how, how's the recruiting process coming along in, in the northwest corner of Arkansas in, in terms of growing the legend on behalf of Austin FC? Um, I do have a couple uh, Texas natives uh, that are up here in the area that that definitely are trying to to come down to Austin and see a game and and really see if Q2 is is what it looks like on TV. And I tell them TV doesn't show half of what Q2 is, and that that's my biggest selling point. Is I'm always trying to get friends to go with me. Uh, co-workers to go with me. I know a couple of times my boss has joked that he's going to go with me, but it's, it's a slow process right now, but I've got a couple that are, that are slowly making their way over uh, to the Verde and black. Well, Carlos, uh, love your story. Uh, appreciate all the support and so thrilled for your family as well with all the great news these past few months. I look forward to seeing you the next time at Q2 stadium and appreciate your time. Awesome. Thank you so much. And now we transition from a fan who has to cross a couple of state borders to get into Texas to a fan who, to watch Austin FC in person, would have to cross an ocean. We're joined by Stephen Allen over in England, and you've mentioned that you grew up about 20 minutes from Newcastle, uh, naturally a fan of Newcastle United. But uh, I sense over the years you had a little extra room in your heart for maybe one more club if the right one were to rear its head. Uh, I know uh, Major League Soccer kind of captured your attention among many others with the Freddie Adu signing back when he was a 14-year-old. But uh, you mentioned before we went on air here uh, that uh, it was really closer to the lockdown in 2020, maybe even the, near the end of the year prior, that uh, Major League Soccer uh, became part of routine viewing for you. How'd that come about? Well, it's, it's strange in the UK, the access that we have to football in that it makes it more difficult here to actually watch the Premier League than MLS. It was one of those things, a few stations here carry the rights to MLS free to view as well. Um, so just one of those things I, I caught on the TV was a bit of a, 
an American fanatic growing up as well, uh, traveling, watching different sports. So yeah, towards the end of 2019, caught some of the bit of the playoff run. And then I think it was really during 2020, during the lockdown, where we all, we all had a bit more time to watch things. And yeah, that's when it really sort of uh, picked up my interest in MLS. Now you've lived, I think, over here in North America briefly, uh, West Coast, uh, East Coast, and a little bit in Canada as well. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So um, part of my family, um, they live out in San Francisco, spent a bit of time on the East Coast uh, in New- in Long Island for a little bit as well. And then, like you mentioned there, spent about a year in Canada as well. So, um, yeah, I've always I've always enjoyed uh, visiting. Well, it's one thing for us in the States to wake up early on a Sunday to catch uh, soccer over in Europe. But for you to follow Major League Soccer, you might ha- have to have some cups of caffeine ready to go. That That's the middle of the night stuff. Uh, what, what's been your typical experience uh, in terms of watching a game live uh, for Major League Soccer from over there? I would, I would actually say um, this time of the year is probably the kindest in terms of time difference. So it was quite nice about four weeks ago when your clocks changed because I was hadn't quite changed yet. So we were like a little bit closer together in terms of time difference. 11, I guess, would be an early kickoff midnight. So, of course, there are a couple of years leading up to Austin FC actually taking the pitch. At what point did you latch on to uh, what was going, going to be the uh, 27th franchise in Major League Soccer? I had seen that there was like an Austin a, a, a football team coming to Austin about a year or two prior to that. But I'd kind of put that out of my mind a little bit because I hadn't I wasn't in a, into MLS at that point. But yeah, once I started digging into looking for a team, yeah, there was there was a lot of things that that jumped out, especially the fan culture, like what Los Verdes and Austin Anthem are are both doing. I quite like that element in the way that they were sort of very inclusive of that Spanish speaking culture in the city as well. That was a big sort of draw to me as well. And maybe the silliest reason, I guess, being a a big wrestling fan during the 90s. Steve Austin uh, being my favorite wrestler. I don't know, I guess uh, Austin had always been in in, in in my head sort of growing up. So uh, there's, there's a few elements to it. Uh, no, no strong links to the city as such, but um, just look different, bit unique, and just, you know, they were doing things in a fun way. So you mentioned uh, Los Verdes, Austin Anthem, seeing that culture from abroad. Uh, you you noted to me your your wife is Spanish. Uh, ha, have you been able to draw her into all of this craziness? Well, she she's not like a big football fan anyway. I would say um, she she grew up in in Valencia, but she was never a big fan uh, growing up there. So she kind of tolerates my my support of Newcastle, and I think yeah, she just about tolerates my support of Austin as well. But I think she quite likes what what the club are doing in Austin, and she's and she's very supportive of um, how I'm, you know, interacting with fans and 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 speaking to fans. You have a favorite moment so far watching uh, Austin FC? It's 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 really it's it's been a really unique experience. Um, New New supporting Newcastle, they were founded in 1892, so it's really impossible to say that you were there in the early days. Um, but with, with Austin, it's, um, that's, that's like a unique experience of being a fan. You've, you've, you, you were there when the, when the club was formed, you followed, followed it from the first games in pre-season and the first games. So I think watching, watching those pre-season games, um, were, were really unique and exciting because no one was really sure what was going to happen. Um, but I think my favorite moment perhaps my favorite game was the um was the game against Colorado um watching those you know the first goals the first win um it's like such a special moment for uh Austin FC um I, th- I think even uh watching it uh, from England you, you you could see how much it meant and yeah that that would definitely rank very very highly on my list yeah, I think that's a that's a pretty common sentiment. You, you noted you have family in the states. Uh, is there a time on your radar when you think you might get back over and maybe even get to venture to Q two Stadium for the first time? 
Yeah, so it obviously travel has been pretty difficult the last couple of years, and it's it's made it made it kind of impossible um, to, to get anywhere. But um, certainly, um, it's 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 on my radar. Um, gonna have to save uh, a little bit to uh, to get out of Europe. But um, yeah, I'm hoping to um, get get to Austin uh, for a, for a few days. It would even be nice to. To maybe try and catch up where there's there's a couple of home games in a row midweek and a weekend would be a nice way of doing it. Um, yeah, and just do a little tour of the state. So m- maybe in the next year or two, I'm I'm, I'm not quite sure. Obviously, it depends how how the world goes. <laughs> and then finally, uh, the same way we're chatting about Austin FC, despite being on different continents, I assume that. Technology and its improvements have helped you stay connected with the team, whether it be social media, linking up with fans. What, what's been your most common way on a non-match day to keep up with uh, everything that's going on over here? Uh, as you mentioned, probably through the uh, supporter group. So um, the, the chats through Slack, uh, Las Verdes. So I've been uh, using that a little bit, but uh, probably the biggest way would be would be Twitter. Um, I, I find sort of the easiest way to... Uh, to keep in touch with uh, with fans, um, so yeah, probably Twitter. Have you recruited anybody to help you grow the legend over there? <laughs> I mean, um, at least my brother <laughs> is a fan, um, and then outside of that, I would say that there, there's probably maybe ten to fifteen would be a conservative guess of um, British fans over here um, that I would speak to. On a on a guess uh, semi semi regular basis, so it's um it's it's definitely growing, but slowly. <laughs> hey Stephen, great to catch up with you. Appreciate your time. Thanks very much, Lincoln. Thanks for the chat.